Welcome back to the You Can Do More YouTube channel, where each week I share videos that are designed to help athletes, parents, and coaches better understand and navigate the collegiate recruiting process. Videos that will help you get recruited. So, you want to play in the NFL, or the NBA, or the WNBA. That's a great goal. That's a good goal. Do you think that your only path to playing in the NFL is by attending and playing football at an FBS school? Do you know how many players were on NFL rosters that attended and played at schools below the FBS level? Find out the answers to this and many more questions in this week's episode, Expand Your Pool. If you saw last week's episode, What Are the Odds? You know the odds of playing at the highest collegiate level Division one, FBS, the odds of getting a scholarship at that level are about one in a hundred. If you didn't see last week's episode, there's a link to a playlist of all the videos at the end of this video and also down below in the description. But calculating the odds, we figured in all the sports, it's going to be about one in a hundred. And if that's your goal, your goal is to play at the highest level possible, period, then okay. But understand and be real, realistic going in <clears throat> that your goal of getting that scholarship is about one in a hundred. But, like I mentioned last episode, if your goal is to play at the highest level possible for you and do something that you love, playing a sport and get rewarded financially for it, rewarded with a scholarship, then there is a way of increasing those odds. There's a way of getting the odds from one in a hundred to about one in 20 or one in 15. And ultimately, that's our goal. Remember that payoff in episode two? The payoff of a four-year college scholarship being between $150,000 and $300,000? That's what I'm talking about here. That's what we want to do, is to get all or part of that paid for. And the first thing that you can do to help in that is to expand your pool. What do I mean, expand the pool? I'm talking about expanding the scholarship pool. A better analogy might actually be going fishing in a pond with more fish. The more fish that are in a pond, the better chance you have of catching that fish. And in, and in this case, I'm talking about fish being a scholarships. And that means looking at levels below the FBS level. If you do that, you go from 2,500 fish in that pond to about 8,000 fish in the pond. There are many, many excellent schools that play very, very good football or any other sport and offer scholarship aid that are below the FBS level. Besides being quality educational institutes, the sports being played at many of these schools are being played at an incredibly high level. So you say you don't want to give up on your dream of playing in the NFL or the NBA or the WNBA. You don't have to. Know this, last year on NFL rosters, there were over 260 players that played their collegiate football at, the level, at a level below the FBS level. So what are these other levels I'm talking about? Well, there's FCS, NCAA Division II, NAIA, NJCAA, NCAA Division III. I know it's confusing. We're going to talk about this alphabet soup and expose some of the myths regarding these other levels next episode. But right now, let's just concentrate on how opening yourself up to playing and competing at these other levels will increase your chances of getting a scholarship. Let's talk about how this is going to add more fish into that pond. So we've already talked about the FBS level, about how there's about 120 schools. Each one of those schools offers about 21 scholarships a year for a total of 2,500 scholarships. Now let's look at some of the other levels. I've been speaking specifically about football, but know that the numbers and the ratios are pretty much the same in any sport you could talk about. So the next level, the FCS level, that stands for the Football Championship Subdivision. It used to be called Division I AA. In this level, there's 125 schools that play football. It includes schools from the Ivy League and national powers like Appalachian State, North Dakota State, think Carson Wentz, and Sam Houston. Each school at this level can offer about 63 scholarships. That's scholarships to use in their program from top to bottom. It's not each year. So if you figure that they're offering about a fourth of these each year, that's about 16 each year. So at the FCS level, 
you've got 125 schools offering about 16 scholarships each year. That adds an additional 2,000 fish to our scholarship pond, 2,000 additional scholarships. And you'll notice there's an asterisk beside that 2,000. I'm going to talk about why that's there at the end of this video. So FBS and FCS are both NCAA Division I. Now the next level we're going to talk about is the NCAA Division II level. In this level, there's 160 schools, and it includes national powers like Northwest Missouri, Valdosta State, Pittsburgh State, Missouri Western. Most of these schools have 36 scholarships, full scholarships to use in their program. And again, let's figure about a quarter of those each year are going to be offered. So about nine full scholarships each year. So at this level, you've got about 160 schools that have the capacity to offer about nine full scholarships each year. So that's about an additional 1,400 fish we've added to our scholarship pond. An additional 1,400 scholarships. And again, notice the asterisk beside that 1,400. We're going to talk about that. Next level is the NAIA, National Association of Intercollegiate Athletics. It's a completely different governing body than the NCAA. At this level, there's about 100 schools that participate in football. Schools like Carroll College, Marion, Missouri Valley College that are national powers. At this level, most programs have 24 full scholarships to use in the program. Again, if you figure about a quarter of those are going to be used each year, that's about six scholarships that are going to be offered to seniors each year. So at this level, there's about 100 schools that have the capacity to offer about six full scholarships each year. So if you include the NAIA, we've added an additional 600 fish to our scholarship pond, additional 600 scholarships. And again, you'll notice that pesky asterisk. So the next level, NGCAA, the National Junior College Athletic Association. Now this, these are two-year schools as opposed to four-year schools. After going to these schools, a lot of these athletes transition to other levels, either FCS, Division II, Division I, but they're two-year programs. In the United States, there's about 70 schools that participate in football at this level. Schools like Butler County Community College and Blinn Junior College. Schools that are national powers and consistently send their players, their athletes on to higher levels. At this level, they can offer 85 full scholarships in the program. And again, this is not each year, that's total. So that's going to be about 20 each year. Now another caveat for this level, many states require that their junior colleges in state reserve a large number of their scholarships, a large number of roster positions for their in-state athletes. Kansas, for example, out of their 55-man active roster, 43 athletes have to be from in-state. So keep that in mind. So at this level, you have about 70 schools that have the capacity to offer about 20 scholarships to high school seniors each year. So that's an additional 1,400 fish we've added to our scholarship pond, an additional 1,400 scholarships. And again, there's that asterisk. So now let's look at how expanding the scholarship pool has increased the number of scholarships that are offered each year. When we combine all of these levels, when we look at the total number of scholarships that are awarded seniors each year, again, start with the FBS. At the FBS level, there's about 2,500 scholarships awarded each year. When we add the FCS level, we've added an additional 2,000 scholarships each year. At the NCAA Division II, we've added 1,400 scholarships. NAIA will add about 600 and the NGCAA another 1,400. So when you combine all of these levels, we're up to 7,900, almost 8,000 scholarships awarded each year. 8,000, and again, there's that asterisk. So just by expanding our scholarship pool, just by looking at other options besides the FBS level, our odds have gone from one in 100 to three in 100. We've increased our, we've tripled our odds. But that's being really, really conservative. Our odds, your odds, are actually much better for two reasons. The first reason, that asterisk. At every level below the FBS level, schools can and do offer partial scholarships. Meaning instead of 2,000 scholarships each year at the FCS level that are awarded, there's many, many more. Schools can offer a half a third, a dollar amount, $500, $1,000, they can break those folds up in, into parcels. They can do that and they often do that. 
And keep in mind, anything that you're getting is helping to defray the cost of that education, that $150,000 to $300,000 price tag that you're having. So the actual number of scholarships awarded each year in the country is actually much more than 8,000. So that, that three in 100 is being conservative. And the second reason it's being very conservative is because I did not include the, the NCAA Division III level in that number. The NCAA Division III, at that level, they do offer athletic programs, but they do not offer athletic scholarships. That being said, most schools at, that, at this level are experts at finding scholarship aid for students. And they are very good at getting athletes at the front of the line to receive this aid. They need to fill the rosters and they know, and they're very good at helping athletes get scholarship aid. So the final number, when you include all of this, when you include the partials, when you include all the different levels, when you include the NCAA Division III, so when we recalculate our odds using the total number of scholarships available at all levels by expanding the pool, we have improved your odds from 1 in 100 to nearly 2 in 30. That is much better odds. Those are very good odds. So by expanding your scholarship pool, by fishing in a pond that's got more fish in it, that's got more scholarships in it, you've increased your odds from 1 in 100 of catching a fish, landing a scholarship, to 2 in 30 or 1 in 15. Those are much better odds for you. A couple points I want to make in conclusion. The first is, although I've been talking specifically about FBS and football, keep in mind that these ratios and the concept that if you increase your scholarship pool, if you look at levels below the Division One or FBS level, you're going to increase your odds of getting a, a college scholarship. Those are true no matter what sport you're looking at. The ratios are going to be about the same, and the concept as far as expanding your pool will increase your chance of getting a scholarship that is the same. The second thing, if you choose to compete and play at a level below the FBS or Division I level, you are not settling. You're going to college, you're getting a college education, a college degree, you're getting that partially or fully paid for, and you're getting to participate in college athletics. That is special. So you're not settling, you're unique, and you're a special person, you're doing something really great. That's it for this week. Thanks, as always, for watching the You Can Do More YouTube channel, and thanks for allowing me to join you and your family in this, your recruiting journey. I appreciate that. As always, at the end of this, if you watch to the end, there'll be a button you can subscribe, you can like down below, you can binge watch, watch, watch the entire playlist. Any questions, leave them in the comment sec section down below. Please share this with your teammates, your parents, your cohorts, your colleagues. And if you consider being a Patreon, I'd like for you to take the time, go to my Patreon page. If you join Team You Can Do More and become a patron, I'm going to be adding some cool stuff to my patron-only feed in the next few weeks. That way you'll be able to take advantage and see that. Next week episode, Alphabet Soup. We're going to be talking about all those letters, what they mean, and debunking, debunking a bunch of myths regarding the collegiate athletics below the FBS Division I level. Thanks. Have a great week. Keep competing. Keep working hard in the classroom, on the field, when you're training, in the weight room, off-season, in-season. Good luck to you. Keep watching. See you next week.